Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I certainly hope you're having a peaceful day. And the reason why I say peaceful day is because if you're looking for a hype type of video, this ain't it. <laughs> I notice here on YouTube that there's all kinds of hype and paranoia videos about the uh, the Yellowstone super, super volcano is going to blow its lid at any time. And there's all kinds of people with charts and they're tied into the USGS and all this other stuff. Let me tell you what, most of them videos are dead wrong. It's just that simple. I'm here to try to straighten out a few things and try to ease people's minds. And I've got a reason for it. I've got 10 talking points on this. The name of this video will be Pure Facts About the Yellowstone Super Volcano. Okay, talking point number one. From 1990 to 1995, I worked for the Montana State Bureau of Mines and Geology. I was a research assistant. I was privy to a lot of data. I created a lot of data. I worked right directly when it came to that Superfund 101 stuff that was going on back in the day when it came to mine flooding contamination. But I was also privy to data about earthquakes, geographical problems of all kinds, and blah, blah, blah. Okay, that gives me a leg up on a whole bunch of people out there that are creating videos that are just pure bullshit. Number two, we've got one seismologist in the state of Montana. His name is Mike Stickney, and I know him, and I know him quite well. I talked to him on several occasions. Mike told me, he said, Jim, I wish I had a $20 bill for every time I fielded a question about that stupid park, about that, uh, that, vol that big volcano, which does exist, by the way, you know, blowing its lid and when it's going to blow its lid and all that. You cannot predict earthquakes and volcanoes and tsunamis and stuff like that with any degree of accuracy. I've said that before. I'm going to say it again. Okay. Number three, my talking point number three is this. Mike showed me a whole bunch of seism seismic data that he had. In fact, he had a nice computer readout on a screen for the last 50, 70 years or so that, that every time an earthquake happened in the state of Montana and he was able to record it, these little rings would appear on his computer screen and they would get bigger like this. It was quite, quite interesting to see this. It took about seven to 10 minutes for that display to run, you know, and all that, because if, if he did it in real time, you'd have been standing there forever. Let, let me tell you, you know, okay. But I got to see that and I got to see a bunch of, and I also I got to see the official, you know, seismograph machines and all that kind of stuff. And Mike showed me exactly what he did to change the paper. He had to do it every 24 hours and whatnot, Abby. And he showed me what, those sensors look like and how they worked and what not have you. All right. I uh, was at number three on that display thing. Number four, the two most seism seism seismic activity, active, excuse me, the two most geographically unstable areas, if you will, in the state of Montana are number one, of course, the park, especially around West Yellowstone, Montana, that area there. And number two, up in northwestern Montana, you got the Flathead Lake, the Mission Valley, Sealy Swan area. Okay, there's a couple of fault lines that run along the Rockies up there. That is one of the reasons, I said fault lines, ladies and gentlemen, and that's one of the reasons why that earthquake happened on the 6th of July in Lincoln, near Lincoln, Montana. That was just right south of them fault lines, okay, a 5.8 magnitude earthquake. Okay, number five, supposedly the park has got a cycle. That, that, big, that magma chamber or the Yellowstone caldera has got a, what I call blow your lid cycle <laughs> every 640,000 years. I made a video last year, I had another subject going, but I called it 640 million years. But I think ge geologists figure and how they figure this is beyond me. I'm not a geologist. I'm just an old retired working man. But 640,000 years, every 640,000 years, that 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 park, will, that that super volcano will, you know, erupt or whatever have you. Well, if that's the case, and the data that I've seen, we've got 200,000 years to go. 
200,000 more years ago. You're not going to be alive. I'm not going to be alive. Your grandkids are not going to be alive. It's, and on down the line, okay? All right. Uh, number six, the government. Look, it's like this, ladies and gentlemen. We don't, they really don't have enough equipment looking at that park. And I'm talking about satellites and every other blasted thing. It's just like Mike Stickney was telling me he needed a lot of, he needed about 12 sensors up there along that uh, uh, mission range, which he didn't have the money to, to, to get put in place to, to keep track of what was going on with that fault line up there. Well, it's the same way it is with the park, you know. But the, the, my point being is, is even if the park was getting ready to blow its lid and the government knew about it, you think they're going to tell you? You think old Trump's going to get on TV and make some big announcement that Yellowstone National Park is about ready to blow its lid and create a national panic, a worldwide panic? You can forget about it. The government's got all kinds of secrets they don't tell you about. Okay. Number seven, there is no, this is for you prepper, you paranoid preppers out there. I know I've got a relative of mine that's, that's a paranoid prepper, but he's got no more survival skills than the man in the moon. But that's neither here nor there. But there, if that park does blow its lid, that magma chamber is so big, it's one of, the, one of the biggest volcanoes on the face of this planet, there is nowhere to run and there's nowhere to hide. The plasmatic blast is going to kill everybody within about, oh, 1,000, 1,200, 1,500 miles, and it's going to have impact worldwide, global-wide. You can build all the bunkers you want to. You can hide underground. You can hide under a rock or anything. You're, you're not going to escape the destru destruction of that park, plain and simple. Okay. You know, I just want to make sure that you got this perfectly clear here, you know. Number eight, Montana's economy, ladies and gentlemen, is being affected. You know, we get a lot of tourists. The number one industry in Montana it used to be ranch and cattle, timber, sheep, and stuff like that. But now it's tourism. It's processing tourists. Tourism is down in the state of Montana. And I know it's because everybody's paranoid that that park is going to blow its lead, which there's no scientific data anywhere of any credibility stating that. Plain, plain and doggone simple. You know, you just can't predict these kind of things. But Montana's economy is being affected by the paranoia and the hype about that volcano that's only about 80 miles from where my rear end is sitting here. I live in Livingston, Montana. Also, they cut back on the amount of travel visas of workers coming in to work the tourist industry and just foreign tourists wanting to come to see Yellowstone Park. The government's starting to, they, they, they banned or blocked a lot of those visas. And it's really affecting the economy of Montana. This paranoia, this undue paranoia that's going on, okay? And number nine, every year there's at least 1,100, 1,200 little tiny earthquakes that happen in and around that Yellowstone area. But you know what? I live in Livingston, Montana here. I've been in the park many times, and you never feel them. You know, that 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 magma chamber has been setting, setting there dormant, but it's really not dormant because Old Faithful Geyser is proof of the venting. The, the, the paint pots are proof of the venting and, and all of that kind of stuff, okay? But... You know, the simple fact of the matter is, is we get around, a, like I say, 1,000, 1,200 quakes a year, but you ne I never feel them. My wife doesn't feel them. Nobody around here in Livingston feels them. The only thing I ever feel is the, the we got a main line, a railroad that runs right through the middle of Livingston, Montana. That's the only thing I hear is the, the train down over, uh, the main tracks are about 200 yards from my house over a hillside. And I and I hear the I feel the earth rumbling and right I hear all kinds of rattling sounds because of that stupid train. Okay, number ten. My this is the last thing I got to say. This is the last thing I've ever got to say about this park or anything like that. 
man, it is my firm belief that mankind has already done a good job of polluting this planet and what not have you. And mankind more than likely is going to be responsible for destroying this planet way before, say, like Yellowstone National Park. And you can quote me on that, too. I've gotten exasperated myself putting out videos stating this fact. You know, we've got too much greed on this planet. We've got people that just don't care about nobody anymore. And this list goes on and on and on. In my closing statement, let me tell you this. When the North American Indians were predominant in this area here, and in this area around Paradise Valley, Montana, where I live, it was the Crow Indians. But all of the Indian tribes, the Blackfoot and the, uh, the Crow, like I say, and on and on like that, we got about 15 uh, Indian tribes up here in the state of Montana. All them chiefs would never let their hunting parties, parties their braves, go in to Yellowstone National Park. You want to know why? Because they believed that there was evil spirits that lived in Yellowstone National Park. Did you just got done hearing me? And I'm going to tell you what those evil spirits are that invade that park that are in there. 2.5 million people go into that park every year. It's the human being that's the evil spirit. Evil spirits with an S. That, that's really what's wrong with Yellowstone National Park. Now there you got it. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, and walk in peace. And if you're planning on making a trip up here to Montana, please come, because I can guarantee you that park isn't going to blow its lid. All right. See you on down the trail. Like I say, walk in peace.